the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, the peace of our blessed Lord be with you this morning. Today is the 27th of February, a Saturday, and is the Saturday of the first week of Lent. And with today, it means we are left with 31 more days to bring the season of Lent to a close. How fast the days are moving and how we are always reminded that there exist more days ahead of us for this walk, this Lenten walk. Today we read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. But before we discuss, we reflect on this passage, shall we begin with a word of prayer? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father of mercies, you bring us gradually to the end of this week, and even before the week ends, you invite us to love, to love as the world cannot love but to love as you love because you bless all men and women with your reign and your son. We pray that this word received in humility may help us to understand this invitation to love as you love, to be merciful as you are merciful. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let's listen to the Gospel, Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Jesus said, you have heard how it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he causes a son to rise on the evil as well as the good, and sends down rain on the righteous and the wicked alike. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the task collected do as much. And if you save your greetings for your brothers and sisters, are you doing anything exceptional? Do not even the Gentiles do as much. You must therefore be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I would ask, I would, I would like us to look at the first invitation. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. <laughs> the question is, who is my enemy? Who are our enemies? Scripture usually doesn't define terms for us. Like so, Bible talks about love, but it wouldn't talk about love as a strong passion and action that leaves you or leads you to give yourself to others. You don't find definition of terms in Scripture. But by the examples and explanation evidences we see of these terms, we come to understand. For example, when you read Luke chapter 10, when the young man asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus gave him a parable, the parable of the good Samaritan. And in the end, you realize that of the three people, the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan, the Ted, the Samaritan, is presented as the neighbor of this man, who had been attacked by the armed robbers or the robbers because the first two, the priest, the Levite, saw they passed. They didn't take action. But the third, the Samaritan, the stranger, saw like the other two saw. He felt compassion. He went close to him. He tied him, poured his oil on his wounds, placed him on his donkey and carried him. Look at the actions the Samaritan performed for a person he did not know so that is my neighbor my heart calls me to act in that instant not thinking about my present and my future but to think about that person who is in need that is love for a neighbor if today we are being called to love our enemies the question is who is our enemy scripture doesn't define enemy it is when you go to, uh, how do you call it, Bible dictionaries, 
and words that explain these terms that try to give us definition of enemies. So this morning I checked one and this is how the word that is translated into English, the Greek word is ekros, in, in translated as enemy, ekros will be defined as a person who has resolved to inflict harm or somebody who is driven by deep-rooted, irreconcilable hatred. Somebody who has resolved to do harm, to create harm, that is an enemy. So if Jesus is saying, he quotes Leviticus 19.18, that of old you are told to love your enemies. When you read to love your neighbor, it is there in Leviticus 19.18. Who was the enemy of the Israelites? Maybe a stranger, the pagan nations who attacked them, who defeated them and led them into exile, could be de described as enemies. Or even in their own compound, among the tribes, when they thought that other men, people from the same race, did things against them, they could perceive them as enemies. But if you look at the, the Greek definition, as somebody who carries or who has resolved to inflict harm on you, Somebody who is driven by deep-seated hatred for you. Today, this 21st century, today, 27th February, can you identify an enemy? Identify your enemy. Else, you'll be boxing against winds. Paul writes to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9.26, and describes how athletes put themselves under training to achieve rewards. So I do say, so that I do not box as against the winds. If we fight, we fight with an enemy and we must see that enemy. If you are praying, we have to pray for an enemy. So we have to identify that enemy. If you are loving a neighbor, we know that neighbor. So we love that neighbor. If you are praying or loving an enemy, we must know that enemy. So who is your enemy? When you read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 36, Jesus presents the word and he says, When we have come to receive his word, people will rise against us. And he begins with people's family, our own family. So look, let's read Matthew 10, 35, 36. I have come to set son against father, daughter against mother, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. A person's enemies will be the members of that person's household. The word ethros or ethroi plural, ethroi plural, will be from your own household. So once you have accepted, embraced Christ, we are talking about true Christians, eh? not Christians by word. People will develop deep-seated hatred for you and they will try to inflict harm on you. That is a person's enemy from his own household. But today, let's ask ourselves, do we find enemies in our dads, in our mothers, in our siblings, because we have embraced Christ? We must go beyond it and see where we can identify these enemies. It exists in our families. Yes, people who are advancing in life and maybe their cousins, their brothers, their extended family members, wish that these people died there or some harm happened to them. So once you get to know of it, you can describe that person as an enemy. You can describe that person as an enemy. But let me take you to the Old Testament and let's see two examples in the Old Testament that describe them as an enemy. In the psalm, when we are presented, the psalmist says, the enemies of God are his enemies. Psalm 139 verse 21. Psalm 139 21. Listen to what the psalmist says. The psalmist called those who hate God as his enemy. And I read Psalm 139 verse 21. He said, Lord, do I not hate those who hate you and abhor those who rise against you? I hate them with perfect hate and they are false to me. Who are those who hate God? Those who rise up against God and his chosen ones. So the chosen one of God, his prophets, his servants, Israel. Anybody who rose against God's prophets, God's nation, Israel, could be termed as an enemy. In the same way today, 
Matthew 10, 35, 36. Anybody who has risen against a chosen daughter or son of God because that person has embraced Christ becomes your enemy. Becomes your enemy. But I will link you to another enemy. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, say Peter writes. Because your adversary, the devil, is roaming around like a lion looking for someone to devour. The word in Greek is not etros, but it is antidikos. Two words, so they are synonyms. The first word, enemy, Jesus says today, ektro, I love your enemies. The singular is ektros. It's different from what 1 Peter 5, 8 uses. In 1 Peter 5, 8, the word is antidikos, which is translated into English as adversary. So adversary is different from someone who carries deep-seated hatred for you. An adversary is somebody who always searches for Lord's suits against you. So Satan is presented as an adversary, somebody who is searching to, to lead Christians into darkness, into error, trying to offset the liberation and the salvation Christ has brought. I don't want to confuse you today, this morning, with this reflection. But because it talks about this term, which is important for us Christians, I'm summarizing it again. I've tested, I started by saying that scripture doesn't define enemy, but it gives us examples or stories, parables to understand who an enemy is. Like Jesus gave the parable of the good Samaritan to explain who a neighbor is. I just cited the Vertical 1918, what Jesus says, the Old Testament, Israel was called to love their neighbors, but they perceive of their enemies as nations who have led them into captivity. So Egypt could be described as Egypt, uh, Israel's enemy, Babylon, Persia, and all these nations. The psalmist says in Psalm 139, 21, Lord, do, I, do not I hate those who hate you? I rise against them, and I rise up against them with a perfect hate, because these people rise against your anointed ones, your chosen ones. Then this same idea comes into the New Testament, Matthew 10, 35, 36. Jesus says, because of the word he has brought, he has launched the kingdom. Anybody who has set this kingdom to become a Christian, because you are a chosen one for the kingdom, people will rise against you. And it begins from your family. It's not only your family. When you move from Christianity, ordinarily, socially, culturally, economically, when people are doing war, people tend to hate them. People tend to hate them. Then I explained to you that there is an enemy, but scripture doesn't use an enemy. He calls him an adversary, Satan. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Let your minds be clear. Do not be drunk. Do not be, do not be hallucinated. Be clear. Be, be of a clear conscience because your adversary is trying to bring Lord seals of darkness against you to offset the liberation and the salvation Christ has brought. Friends, we were God's enemies. St. Paul writes to the Romans, Romans 5.10. What does Paul say? When we were enemies, God sent his son to die for us. So it tells you and I that, yes, we can see Satan as an adversary, Antidicus. We can see family members, nations as Ectroi or a person as an Ectros enemy. But we, once, we were Ectroi of God, the enemies of God. Romans 5.10. What does Paul say? While we were enemies, God sent his son. We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. How much more now that we have been reconciled? So we were once enemies. We also stood up against God. We rose against God like people write against the anointed of God. We rose against God by our disobedience in the past. And it was Christ there that reconciled us. So now the question is, if Christ is telling you, me, you today, Saturday, to love and pray for your enemies, who is that enemy? In the parable of the Good Samaritan, we have come to know who a neighbor is. When your heart moves 
to pity, to compassion. And you don't think about your own present and your own future. But the man that is lying down, you consider his present and his future and you move to his aid. In that sense, love for the neighbor is described as that will, that action to give yourself your present and your future to that person close down there. In the same way, I ask you this morning, who is your enemy? Have you identified that enemy? You can't love the enemy once you have not identified because like Paul says, you cannot be boxing with a wind. You box with an enemy. So Christ is asking us, love your enemies. Who is my enemy? Ask. Is Christ asking us to love those who hate God? Those who are rising against men and women of God? Is Christ acting us against those who are pushing certain agendas that are against our norms, our cultures? Is Christ asking you to love people who have risen against Christians, who are burning, butchering, beheading Christians? Is Christ asking you to love Satan, who is an adversary, an enemy? Friends, do not forget, this morning, the message I got before I came to you is this. Romans 5.10 While we were enemies, God reconciled us. The enemy God identifies us is still this world. This world is still presented as an enemy because this world is still rising against God and everything God has stated and planned and willed for the good of this world. This world wants to turn everything God has planned relationship between man and woman, the perfect law of God that blesses this environment. Man and this world is rising up against God and all who stand for the truth, the objective truth and not subjective one. So it is this world that has become the enemy. So God is asking this world to turn to him. For some of us, God has become our enemy. Because we think that it is God that brought this pandemic. Yes, when you speak to people outside Africa, they think that it is God that has brought this pandemic. People think that God looked on and allowed this pandemic like the way he, he allowed the Holocaust, the burning and the killing of Jews to happen without taking action. So people say, I hate God. I hate God. I dislike God. I hate him. So you that enemy. God is asking you to turn to him. For you who called God as your enemy, Jesus is saying, love your enemy, so love God. Turn to God. Turn to God. This is not an invitation to God because God sends a slight and his reign to the evil, that wicked man, that enemy. That is why he is alive. So, land is an invitation for this world that hates God, that is the enemy of God, to love God. So Jesus is saying, you this world, you individuals, you nations, you leaders of the world who hate God, love God. Love God because you call God your enemy. Love God because you call God your enemy. It is an invitation to love God. Love your enemy if God is your enemy. Love God during this season of Lent. Friends, then Satan, as an adversary, somebody who brings lawsuits against us to lead us into darkness. You should pray for Satan, not for his conversion, but he wouldn't convert, that his time will come very quickly. Pray that Satan's time will come very quickly, that he will be bound again. He will be bound again for the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. Will it be difficult for a couple who are separated, who are divorced for years, but are still bonded by children to pray for each other during this land? You might say loving that person will be difficult, but can you begin with a prayer for that person? This is another way of loving that enemy. Friends in Christ, this is an invitation and a call for all of us. Those persons I identify as an enemy, God is asking me to bring them to him in prayer. Identify an enemy today, Saturday. Present the person to God. 
and see what God does with that person. You are a divorced person. Pray for that person who has left you. Offer that person to the Lord. Your family friends are rising up against you because of your success. Offer them to God. You that hates God, turn to God and you'll be saved. The peace of Christ be with you, beloved. Stay blessed. Amen.